My friend, Micah Robinson, you are at the front of the line this you. afternoon. That was Mike Young. Mike Young. That wasn't me. That was Mike that Young. Was the cat from the subway. The cat from the subway. Yeah, he was. He had a viral video circulating of him uh, singing in the subway in New York, like last year. Was that the video? That was not the video. That actually video is evidence of uh, the kind of inspirational conversation we want to have today. That cat was singing in the subway last year, got a viral video. Then he went on America's Got Talent, made it to the semifinals, did not win, got stabbed nine times because somebody thought he had money now and tried oh to gosh. rob him. <clears throat> and uh, still he completed his album that's set to come out. Uh, that was the single from it. He was performing in Good Morning America. Wow. Yeah. Mike Young. That's amazing. Ain't it? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, what a way to start off a conversation huh? with something that's special. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you're something special. Oh, thank you, brother. I wanted to bring you on because uh, it really meant a lot that you were able to complete this concept of the sort of love interludes for my record. It's yeah, been a true yeah. blessing to start to work with you this year on your own music and being able to record some things with yeah. you and. Uh, so it's been a, I guess it's because I've been hearing about Micah Robinson for a long time, since the Clarity single, Ooh. back in the day, yeah. Yeah, take it back, this throwback Thursday, it's not Thursday right now. It's almost Thursday. You might be listening to this on Thursday. Yeah, you know. might be. Wherever you are. Um, but yeah, that was my introduction to Micah Robinson a long time ago, and then your show at Songbird, Yeah. I guess. Yeah, that shit blew me away, man. Oh Seriously. man, thanks bro. We're doing it again. When? Uh, December 22nd at Pearl Street Warehouse. I've spent pretty much the whole year <clears throat> doing a lot of other things like smaller feature shows and party showcases. Uh, recently opened up for a few artists. Blessed to do all of that, you know. But I'm really excited about doing my own full show again. So December 22nd. Yeah, if, uh, if it's not December 22nd yet when you hear this. Right, I, I'll have to look. It should be. I think I want to say that we should have this out in time, so that should work out great. And otherwise, what is it that they should be checking out in terms of your music that you've just been working on? Oh man, um, so let's see. Like I said, got the show Pearl Street Warehouse, December twenty second. Um, later that month, I'll be having somewhat of a, a full circle moment, kind of special to me, opening for Bilal at City Winery. On December 27th and 28th um, As far as my own music I put out an EP called Experimental Acetaminophen A few months ago um, Recently released a single Called Heart Song That I was fortunate to cut with The man himself JK here at Crab Shack <laughs> Music And um, At the top of the year I actually got a video Coming out for one of the songs On uh, Experimental Acetaminophen that I worked with uh, T.L. Benton from Mecca Filmworks on. I'm really excited about it. Oh, nice. That's awesome. For, for which song? For ETD, which stands for Emotionally Transmitted Disease. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we shot a video. It's pretty It's pretty crazy. Yeah? Yeah. Did you do the whole, you know, you had the, how many videographers did you have going and you had a makeup crew and that whole thing? And the... uh, Man, I had... I had my sister, oh, sweet. Marissa Robinson, on social media known as DC Hair Lady. Uh, she was it. That's awesome. I had my sister. I had TL shooting. And um, I had my girlfriend, Tashira, hanging out, just being helpful. And also a good friend of mine assists me in many ways. Can't really give him a title, but uh, Bryant Brown, also known as BMO. All right. Yeah, they, they were all hanging out. And we actually shot it in my apartment. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, man. You know, so uh, I guess as a little teaser, I'll say I am the lone actor in the video. Okay. So. It sounds like this is very much the product of, uh, 
you know, many new independent artists, which is doing the majority of the work yourself with a very small <laughs> and, yeah, you know, man. close knit team around you. Yeah. Uh, gotta, gotta do it. Talk to me more about like what that experience has been like because that's it's really something when you're just first starting out to, and it's so important to have you know a supportive uh, circle around you as you're doing this. Yeah, man, I can honestly say, um, I and I I don't mean to be unrelatable because I know some people struggle with this, but I can honestly say that I have been super blessed in that regard. In that, it's been pretty easy. Um, People have just kind of like fallen into my lap, fallen into my path, you know, who I've been able to, you know, to encourage in one way or another, pour into whatever. Um, and they've been they've been just super helpful and super supportive. You know, people like yourself, um, Tom Whitfield, been super helpful, uh, cut a lot on my records, supported me with live performances. Uh, people like Bryant, my manager, Dwayne. Um, Man, the list goes on. The, the Brian Hessler, Dustin Thomason, who worked on the mixing and mastering of most of my stuff. Tashir has been super helpful, just like, you know, helping me keep some peace and joy in my life as I go through all of this mm -hmm. stuff. You know. Um so yeah, man, I've just I've been I've been really, really blessed that, that that sort of close circle around me has has been incredible and really helped me to to do almost everything that's come to my mind, like I don't feel, even though I am, I guess, an independent artist, you know, I don't feel, like, limited, you know. I feel like whatever comes in my, my, my mind, whatever I'm led to do, I just, like, send two text messages and it kind of happens, you know, so. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, man. And to make the bigger things happen, it definitely takes, you know, more than just oneself. Oh, man, to yeah. To make it happen, so, for sure. But, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that but in any means to, like, hype myself. That's... Like I said, it's it's all grace. It's super blessed. Man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, one thing that I've always wanted to ask you, I love the fact that I can be your friend, but I can also still be your fan. I'm I'm totally a fan of yours too, and you know that I was able to start as a fan and sort of become friends. And uh, it's not uh, it's not always the case, and that's fine. But I'm I'm I love being <laughs> you know so into your music. It makes the recording process a lot more fun. You know, Th not that it takes you any more than one take. As I witnessed, <laughs> we've got Micah one take Robinson. Uh, for all the instruments, which was pretty amazing. And, you know, with just singing the words in his head. So, like, talk to me about just your songwriting process because there's so much that I appreciate, uh, whether it's the level of the lyrics or just, uh, you know, the way the song is laid out, you know, the juxtaposition of certain sections. So, um, I would say my songwriting, to, to most accurately describe my songwriting process, I'd have to say it's it's like really a large scale thing. The immediate parts of it uh, is pretty simple. Um, I don't really, you know, rehash a lot of things. I kind of just roll with what comes to me and trust that. But I, but in an overall sense, just you know, lead anybody astray here with this podcast. Like, yeah, hey, go write whatever comes to your brain and record <laughs> it and call it a day. You know, um, <laughs> at this point, I've spent a lot of time, both intentionally and unintentionally. Having experiences, gaining, uh, you know, knowledge and uh, just kind of like a wealth of understanding of various musical concepts, life concepts, things. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a studier, I'm a learner, you know, with everything, even things that aren't music. Like I'm always just kind of analyzing and, and, and taking stuff in. And, and I think what happens is with the creative process, I, I try to just kind of trust everything that's in me and and just let it let it come out you know but but it's like a long-term thing I mean everything from my parents when I was born my parents both worked in radio um my mother worked in radio she was actually an on-air personality for maybe 20 years or something like that hmm. and uh, my father worked in the engineering department but by the time I was born he had switched careers and had become a preacher which he still is now he's assistant pastor of a church in northwest um, so I think even just like little experiences like that or like, you know, my parents not being married, both both very still involved in my life, though, like, you know, and, and they both, you know, went to church, but we went to two separate churches. And like my father went to this kind of like really pop in Baptist church in the 90s and had a lot of like politicians and 
kind of fairly well-to-do black people in Northwest Washington, D.C. So there was this, like, sort of high black thing. It's, it's gospel, but it's, like, gospel influenced by classical music, like people like Richard Smallwood. And actually, the guy who was minister of music at the time was a protege of Richard Smallwood wow. at my church. But then my mother's church was this, like, black Catholic church where the guy who uh, was the music director was also the person who wrote the first black Catholic, black Catholic uh, service music. And it was this all, like, he was basically like a jazz funk musician, kind of like if Grover Washington Jr. or, like, Gil Scott Heron wrote church music. So, <laughs> so wow. like, you know, so I kind of had all of that happening, you know, even just as a kid. And then, you know, to go to Howard and have that experience and get the theoretical foundation and all that other kind of stuff. I try not to think about too much of that now. But I think it all kind of being in there just leads to, like, the freedom of expression actually being still kind of informed, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, no, it does, for sure. Wow, that's really fascinating. Um, and so I wanted to play for everybody one of the tunes from your EP. Cool. I thought we'd do Hindsight because you did submit it for the 61st Grammys. And I did. What category? I did. Um, I believe Hindsight was R&B vocal performance. I think it was just vocal performance for that one. Uh, I know I did also submit Experimental Acetaminophen, the title track, for uh, arrangement for instrument and vocals. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Hindsight was, was for vocal performance. Great. And it is definitely an amazing vocal performance, that's for sure. And we did the piano here. That's my... We did. We did sort the piano of. here, and I think there's still a little bit of your drum track in there, too. Oh, yeah, in my, the final. yeah the fingers, yeah. <laughs> fingers. We also yeah. got Greg Clark on there playing drums. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of the rest of the record. So you're going to listen to a clip now of Hindsight on Experimental it. Acetaminophen. Don't really know what you expected, but something made you see love in me. Then again, you always had me. Even more than me than I could see Insecurities made me feel I wasn't good enough So I only gave just good enough to you Now I'm seeing hope and this is good enough For you to give me another chance to love you Cause I love you It's not too late to say I love you Cause I love you I love you And I wish I could change your mind And I wish I could turn that time To when you still believed in me I love you then The way I do Hope y'all enjoyed that. Woo! <laughs> Party on. Are you supposed to woo your own music? Is that bad? Hell yeah. Self, it's self-love, man. <laughs> We're supposed to love ourselves. Well, you know? cool, and man. it's a great song. I'll love and it. And woo me. again. Yes. If I'm not, I don't I don't want to, I would try to woo, but I don't, don't want to do that to Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't leave the people. Woo! Whoa, see. That's why he didn't. He, he didn't want to dwarf my little woo. Right, yeah. Trying not to embarrass me. That's, <laughs> that's why how I'm excited I get about your music, man. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. Um, and that's why it was such a pleasure for me to have you agree to really round out the concept uh, with my record, like I alluded to earlier, in that I took uh, the song, Love is a Song Anyone Can Sing, yeah, yeah. and um, I asked certain individuals and then sort of made some small group settings where we just put the melody in a different context. Um, and so... I think that the melody worked in this way because it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's got this kind of walking down the street mm -hmm. quality to it. And uh, right, yeah. And uh, Micah and I had joked about the dozen a day book sitting on my piano while we were recording. Great book. That song. It is a great book. And uh, so when I asked Micah to sort of introduce the song. You know, I wanted him to kind of introduce this concept at the beginning of the record. Uh, he came up with some amazing lyrics for it. You know, sweet little arrangement out front that was sort of in the style of this 
doesn't a day yeah. kind of vibe, right?